This bush reserve at Avalon in New South Wales contains remnant spotted gum and littoral rainforest. For the past 10 years or so, it's also been home to a colony of grey-headed fly fox. Daytime is surprisingly busy for animals usually thought to be creatures of the night. They fan their wings to keep cool when it's hot, groom themselves, give birth, tend their young, mate, look around and even fly around during daytime. But they don't eat during the day. At night, they make extensive foraging trips in search of rainforest fruits and the nectar and pollen of native trees. The population will always be limited by the food supply and their habitat, and humans are constantly clearing their habitat because we both like to live in the same places. The population of grey-headed flying foxes once numbered in the millions, but by 1990 they were reduced to just 700,000. Over the following decade this fell another 30%. The species was listed as endangered in New South Wales in 2001. A flying fox gives birth to just a single pup, usually in mid-October, after a six-month gestation. The mother hangs head downwards, but her wings make a safe hammock until the newborn grasps the nipple with his teeth and his mother's belly fur with his feet. His eyes are open and he's alert and covered in fur. Mother carries baby with her for the first few weeks, but once he can keep himself warm, she'll leave him in the camp at night while she forages. But she can carry him long distances because she needs to be able to move to wherever food can be found. It will be late January at the earliest before the baby can fly well enough to feed himself. It's now early December. There are many flying fox casualties in modern Australia. Here are two of them. Well, they're being fed at the moment a, um, a formula that's specifically designed for flying foxes. Flying foxes, unlike other native animals, um, will tolerate um, sugar in their milk. So if worse came to worse and I was desperate overnight and I'd run out of milk, I could actually grab cow's milk. And when they're weaned, which will be in January, when they're about four or five months old, um, they'll start eating solids. So they'll go onto blossoms and native fruits and flowers and that sort of thing. Flying foxes are the primary pollinators of canopy trees in Australia, native trees. They're actually very important to Australia's very own um, commercial hardwood industry as well, which I don't think a lot of people realise. Um, without these guys looking after our eucalypts and our rainforest trees, um, quite possibly the forests will collapse without them. They're, they really are so crucial in the role of pollination and seed dispersal. Their numbers are in serious decline. These little guys are, are grey-headed flying foxes. They're uh, listed in both New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland and they're federally listed as well. So it's well recognised that um, their numbers have been in serious decline for probably at least the last 15 years. It's estimated there are about three to 400,000 of them left, whereas 10 years ago there were millions of them. So the decline's been very rapid. Habitat loss is the primary problem. Um, and so it's not just places to roost, but it's, it's food. So we're seeing mass starvation events. Um, climate change is having a major impact as well. Um, these animals will not survive over about 40 degrees. They literally fall out of the trees and um, from heat exhaustion and stress and have little heart attacks and pass away. We're also losing a lot of them through um, in the urban areas because they're moving into the cities looking for flowering native um, plants. So we're seeing losses due to electrocution on power lines, particularly um, pregnant or lactating females that are carrying the babies and the extra weight. They stop more often and unfortunately they rest on power lines, so we lose them through power lines. They like having their dummies around all the time. Um, just like our babies, it's just, it's just comfort, it soothes them, particularly when they first come in and they've lost their mothers. Um, people also don't know that they really are four to five times more intelligent than dogs. They have an incredible social structure, they really look after each other. <clears throat> they have an incredible language and vocalisation. They adore being tickled and fussed over. I suppose the disease that people have heard of most recently is um, Hendra virus, which is, has been transmitted allegedly from flying foxes to horses and has proven fatal obviously in horses um, and can from horses be passed to humans, which is um, the greatest concern. 
Um, Hendra is um, present in flying foxes that they've found in less than 1%. So again, it's um, very, very low. And interestingly enough, in the minister's report that came out in Queensland late last year when this Hendra virus first blew up, um, the only transmission line that was actually scientifically proven was from cats. So there's a lot of speculation amongst the wildlife and the conservation industry that perhaps it's feral cats that are actually infecting uh, these horses as opposed to flying foxes. The other disease that people are worried about, are, of course, is rabies. Um, in Australia, rabies is called Lisa virus. Um, for all intents and purposes, it's, it's almost the same thing, very, very close genetically. Um, and this, again, is in flying fox populations at about 0.4%. So it's a very, very low percentage. So although it is a concern and one should be very careful when you're around flying foxes, um, it's really not um, as, a con as big a perhaps concern as it has been made out in the media and, and other areas. So Dara, well, she chews her teeth a little bit now, so she's actually starting to get her teeth. When you go ready for apple. Yeah, we're actually, we've just introduced a little bit of steamed apple into her, their diet now. One thing um, about flying foxes as well, when they eat, um, they suck the juice out and the nectar out of their food and then they spit everything else out. So they spit out the fibre, they spit out the skin and that sort of thing. The reason they do that is um, power to weight ratio basically. Um, if you've got to be flying, you've got to be as lightweight as you can. So they suck all the goodies out and then anything that's going to weigh them down, like the, the husks and the fibre and the skins, they, they spit out onto the ground. Uh, Newman Campbell just introduced shooting in Queensland, you know, even though it was outlawed by the Supreme Court in, you know, 2006, under the grounds of being inhumane. He's taken them off the um, Cruelty Act and he's taken them out of the Native Protection Act. He's got the Royal Botanic Gardens and other government department dispersing them. There's dispersals going on all the way up and down the New South Wales coast and into Queensland. One thing people should be aware of though, you absolutely cannot get ill from flying fox droppings, even from an infect infected animal. There's no transmission, um, there's no way of transmitting disease, so they're not a worry from a health point of view. But certainly people worry it's just not clean and not very nice having their droppings around, and that's fair enough. Their power to weight ratio is really important, so what goes in actually comes out very fast. You've got 20, 20 minutes to half an hour and they'll, they'll actually pass their last food. Um, and what they're doing is they're depositing seeds, so quite often that'll be as they're flying and they'll, they'll defecate, it'll fall to the ground, it'll have seeds in it and just enough um, fertiliser with their dropping to actually germinate that seed. So it's an important part of the, the process of um, creating forests. Their ecological role is really important. They're a keystone species, particularly um, for our native forests, um, for the canopy trees. So the big tall eucalypts, the angophras, and in the rainforests, all the, the top canopy trees are predominantly pollinated and their seeds dispersed by flying foxes. Certainly birds do a little bit and possums will do a little bit, but it's the flying foxes that do the bulk of it. The other thing is these other animals can't disperse the, the seeds like the flying foxes can. Flying foxes can fly up to 200 kilometers in a night and they can be spreading pollen all that distance and fertilizing trees. So they're actually protecting genetic diversity as well. Um, and they're also spreading seeds up and down the coast. I know the koala um, slogan is no tree, no me, but the slogan for flying foxes is no me, no tree. There are, there's a real synergy between the two, yeah.